we'll continue on this wall again I'll show you guys up close how to create a line I'm using the edge of the brush light pressure and then even it out Hi guys, today we are going to show you how to paint this closet. As you can see, we have already patched all the damage, all the holes and uh, sanded all of this. If you are interested, I created a different video uh, where we showed you how to do it. Check out the link in the description and uh, today we'll paint the ceiling, we'll paint all the walls inside the closet. As you can see, we have uh, these rails, so we'll have to cut around them. I'll show you how to do it. In general, this closet uh, imitates a room since it has a ceiling and all the walls, so it will be very similar to painting any kind of room. This color will probably need three coats because we're using white paint. There are still a couple of areas where we have to do minor filling. We'll have to cook these uh, gaps on top of the baseboards and this electrical box will, uh, needs to be done as well. I'll show you this shortly. I will quickly show you which tools we will be using. First of all, this is uh, the caulking gun. I uh, will be using Alex Plus caulking. Last should last up to 40 years. This is a very good gun. It doesn't drip when you use it. Um, here we have the Wooster Pro uh, brush, angled one, 65 millimeters. This is how it looks. We've got the roller cage. It's Wooster as well. The roller, also Wooster. In general, like I consider Wooster to be one of the best brands if, when it comes to painting. We've got the tray. Uh, here we have the extension pole, Wooster Sherlock GT. Uh, don't forget about the drop sheet. It will co cover our floor when we paint. And uh, here we have uh, the actual paint from Gliden in this case. And right here I have the strainer. We'll have to strain the paint uh, before we start painting. It's always a good idea to do it even if you have uh, uh, brand new fresh paint. There still can be some small chunks which will end up on the wall. And by straining, you will prevent that from happening. Now I'll quickly fill these gaps before we start painting. Normally they need about half an hour to dry. Press the handle and the caulking will start coming out. This caulking tube is a bit old, but it still works. Just use your finger. To gently smoothen the line. The idea here, here is not to put too much caulking, just enough to cover this gap I will also do these corners there are different ways to do it this is a quick one since it's a closet, I'm not too concerned about how these baseboards will look. Now I will do these gaps around the box. Might want to add a little bit more right here. 
It is also a good idea to have a rag, wet rag with you, if you deal with a lot of caulking. Again, you only have a couple of areas to fill, that's why I'm not worried about that. And as I said, after you have filled all the areas, normally it takes about half an hour to dry, to be ready for painting. The next step will be to strain our paint. So first I will put all the paint that's in our cut bucket inside the big bucket. It's the same paint. And I can already see how many chunks there are in the cut bucket. I will also use a brush to get as much paint as I can out of the bucket. There are still chunks in there. Since I'll be using this bucket after we strain it, you can also get a fresh one if you want. Now we'll put our strainer inside the cut bucket. And now we can pour the paint inside the cut bucket. Oh my god. This paint has been sitting for quite a while. I'll stop right here. Now we'll carefully lift the strainer up like this. To speed up this process, we can put our strainer inside the tray and I will use the roller to push the rest of the paint out. Repeat it again. That's it, now we have clean paint, which is ready to go. Now we'll wash the strainer and the brush. For now, I will put another tray actually on top of our tray with the paint. It's a small trick that you can use, this way it won't dry. And this is how much pieces of uh, dry paint we managed to catch quite a lot. Now we can set up the drop sheet, cover the floor. I will put a little bit more paint inside the tray. This way we have less paint in our cut bucket. And now we can start painting. So first we will cut the ceiling, all sides. So you need to put the brush inside, just tap it on the sides, this way you can control the paint and carefully start painting. While I'm at it, I will also do the top edge of the wall as well. So I'm trying to smooth out the edges in the end. This way, if they dry, I won't have uh, lines, which can be visible after the paint dries. It's a fairly straightforward process. You just have to apply proper pressure, light in the end. and keep going until you do all four sides. 
As for the patches that you guys see on the wall, we don't have to prime them since we will likely be doing three coats of paint. Even if you're doing only two, we will still not need to prime them. These two coats, they will be properly uh, covered and painted and won't be visible. In the end, as you see, I'm trying to smooth out all the lines. It may be heavy, huh? Here's our helper today. It may be heavy to carry the bucket with you all the time. That's why you can use the leather together with the cat, like this. Just put it on the ladder and get the paint from here. Again, I'm getting only a little amount of paint on the tip of the brush and then when I hit it on the walls I remove the excess and it doesn't drip as you can see at all As for this narrow piece of wall, I will paint the whole thing while I'm here. So in order not to get too much paint on this painted surface, I will just go from top to bottom like this first and then in the end, after it's fully covered, I will just even it out like that. Here we have our light. So this is the first cut that we'll have to do. I will actually go underneath the light fixture carefully. So I pu push on the brush and as you can see, we only have a few hairs in the end. This allows the brush to go underneath the light without leaving the paint on the uh, metal. This hole I'm not worried about right here because this is where <laughs> the light will go later when it gets reinstalled. Again, as you can see, I'm going from top to bottom and lift off the brush in the end. Some areas may be tricky and we have to control the amount of paint that we apply on the wall. So uh, start with a little bit of paint because if you get too much right here you will end up painting the fixture like somebody else did before. Which again sometimes people do that and they don't care which is fine. Uh, my goal right now is to show you how it can be done without leaving this mess. Again I'm only using a few hairs to push the paint underneath the light like this. I'll show you again how much paint I get on the brush. As you can see, I only use the tip of the brush to put the paint on and then I hit it on the sides a few times. This way it won't drip and I still have enough uh, paint to uh, use on the wall. Here we've got so-called fish eyes small holes in the filler 
that's why I'll have to put a little bit more paint over there. Ideally, this has to be patched again, but again, since we are working in the closet, and uh, this side most likely won't ever be visible to anybody, that's why I'm not too concerned about that. We're getting close to the end of the car in the ceiling. We're pretty much done. And it's almost time to start rolling. So I will leave the brush here for now. Now we should be using our roller. So get a little bit of paint on the roller. Again, the goal is to make sure that it doesn't drip right like right now and then we'll use our extension and uh, I will start rolling so I'll first do this section right here yes it squeaks but it works fine so I'll add a little bit more Our goal is to put enough paint on the ceiling and uh, not to create any thick lines when we roll. So I'll get close to the edge now and uh, without hitting the wall, obviously. And uh, even if you hit the wall, it's not the end of the world. You can simply wipe it off. And the idea is to keep the edge where you're working wet, which means if the paint starts drying, at, for example, if now I will go all the way to the beginning, well, not right now, but in a couple of minutes, for example, this will be partially dry and what will happen is I will lift off the semi-dry paint from the uh, ceiling and I don't want to do that. That's why it's important to keep this paint wet when you roll the ceiling. I can go all the way, all the way right here. Yes, the roller does need some lubrication. And then As you can see here, I did hit the ceiling and right now I'll show you how to fix that. But first I will finish this part. I should have cut it, I just forgot. I'll just go very close and maybe use a brush to hit this small area. So if you accidentally hit the wall like this, it's not the end of the world. Simply put some paint on top and I will hit this one as well. That's it. The first coat on our ceiling is done. Now we can proceed to the walls. Next we will start painting the walls. I'll start with this one. Here I'll show you guys in case if you want to cut just the wall you would do it in a similar manner when you press on the edge 
of the brush and again leave just a few hairs of the brush to create a straight line like this. This will be important if you uh, use a different color, for example, you want to leave the ceiling white and uh, use a different colors, uh, color on the walls. But in our case, it's the same paint, same color, so I'm just showing you this as an example. Also, in most cases, the ceilings will be flat. In this case, again, we don't care. It's going to be actual everywhere. So I will keep going on this corner. Again, I'll do both sides right away. In the end, even it out like this. Once you reach the bottom, there are a couple of ways how you can do it as well. Since our baseboards are not painted yet, we can simply go over the top of the baseboard like this since the baseboard uh, baseboards are going to be white as well once we are done the only difference is we will use the semi-gloss paint to finish our baseboards but for now it just makes our life easier we don't have to cut the bottom now i will roll this wall once i have cut it I won't be using the extension right now. So what I will do, I will spread the paint on the flat surface first, like this, because I don't want to get over this edge. And then just light pressure on the roller. Now we have to spread all this paint. Again, I'm trying to go close to the corner here. Keep going until you cover all the spots. And now, as you can see, we almost have no paint on the edge. We will continue on this wall. Again, I'll show you guys up close how to create a line. I'm using the edge of the brush. Light pressure and then even it out. In this case, we don't have to do it this way, as I said, but uh, I'm just showing you how you would do it in case you have a different color. I'll show you if you want to cut the baseboard. Idea is very similar. Again, you You have to get appropriate amount of paint on the brush, so maybe spread it out first before you start cutting, and then start slowly cutting the edge this way. Just the tip of the brush. And again, in this case, I don't have to do it, so I'll just keep going like this. And now I will use the extension.
when you guys roll the wall again you have to keep the paint wet so don't leave this piece for a long time otherwise it will dry like this and while it's wet uh, all the lines and inconsistencies will even out while the paint is wet so the idea is to do it one section at a time and not to go back to the painted section so as far as i'll go right now is uh, this far this way i will even all the lines now i'm using light pressure on the roller and it's going to look like this now with this big wall i will first cut all four rails that you can see right here and only then i will do the top the other side and the bottom uh, there are different methods of doing this if you have two people for example one guy can cut ahead so for example he can do like uh, top side bottom and these two and then you immediately roll behind him uh, since i'm by myself i can only do it this way so i'll cut these guys first most likely they'll be more or less dry by the time uh, i'm done uh, cutting the rest of it and start rolling that's why we have to be careful and to not leave uh, too many lines when we do the cutting like before when you cut around this metal again i will first spread some paint on the wall and only after that i will start cutting the rail like this so in this case i'm leaving a small line on the rail which is not a big problem and as i said in the end each section i will just smooth it out like this light pressure there's another way of doing this uh, when you simply cut really close to the uh, rail and you leave a little of a gap a little bit of a gap this works as well so whichever way uh, works better for you you can do it uh, this way but again I'll I'll just touch touch the metal uh, rail slightly and leave a little bit of paint on it and uh, the idea here is to create a straight line for the whole uh, length or height of this rail either of these methods can be used to cut the walls the ceilings when you have different colors this is uh, the way to go it takes some practice definitely but in order to be able to do it you need to start doing it and even if you make mistakes you can always get a rag and just wipe off any excess paint from the rail in this case all right so this is how it looks now it's fairly straight i can make it even better once i do the second and uh, the third coats to make it more even but even now it looks quite good I'll try to show you guys up close again how it gets done on this side also for this type of cutting it's always good to have a high quality new brush uh, then it works the best and controlling the amount of paint is critical as well if you get too much paint the line 
it won't be straight. And as I said, trying to smooth out all the edges of the uh, brush lines, basically. Again, first I spread it on the wall and then gently continue with the cutting. You may say that I should have removed these rails from the wall. Yes, that's an option as well, but uh, in this case, I'm trying to show you how it's done, the cutting. And besides that, I don't really want to bother these rails because they get screwed in into the uh, metal frame, metal beams behind the wall. And uh, the less you touch them, the more stable your shelving will be afterwards. Now I'm going to finish cutting the other two, finish uh, cutting the wall and then we will roll the whole wall. Again I'm not gonna do the top since we have already cut it. I'll keep going on the side. As for this telecommunication box that we have here, I'm not going to cut around it. I will actually paint it this way. It will match our wall. All I have to do is to cut around the lock carefully using the same method that we are learning today. Just using a few hairs of the brush to gently go around the lock without leaving too much paint on the sides on the lock itself after that simply brush it over you can push the paint inside here like this Then I can simply cut this piece You can either do it this way or you can cut around the box whichever way it works best in your case Oh, you see I'm following the shadow right now It has to be like this And keep going until you paint all sides. I will also cut around all of these boxes. This uh, way it's going to be easier for us to roll afterwards. So I will go all the way here. In this case I just push 
the tip of the brush inside. Don't worry if you get some paint on the, this metal part since it's gonna get covered afterwards. Now we can hide this cover inside like this. Now we'll go around this receptacle as well. See there's some chunks, that's probably from the wall. Okay, this was a difficult part or time consuming. Now again, we'll keep going fast. As you can see, I'm doing this wall right away. Seems, uh, since I'm in this corner anyway. As you can see, I got carried away a little bit and pretty much finished uh, cutting this wall prior to finishing cutting our big one. Again, this is not critical in this case. It's a first coat and, uh, and we can finish it right now. Look who's helping us. I'll proceed on the bottom. Again, I'm not gonna cut it, I'll just go on top of the baseboard like this you can even paint the baseboard in the same color if you want the eggshell since again it's a closet and there won't be much uh, walking moving around stuff the semi-gloss that is usually used to paint baseboards Provides better protection, it is shinier. Okay, here we have the box. I will paint it this way. And uh, if I get some paint on the cover, you can simply wipe it off. Again, usually you should use the rag for that, but it's up to you how you do it. areas where we have mud on the wall once uh, the paint gets on them they can get wet and will start to disintegrate or break apart so you shouldn't work it too much Okay, we are pretty much done. A um, couple more words about the baseboards. As you can see right now, I'm just painting the top. Uh, most likely I will paint them semi-gloss afterwards. The semi-gloss paint provides better protection for the baseboards and it has a different shine, gloss, glossier shine. But another option is to paint the baseboards with the same paint. It will work as well in this case. Like I said, the, the cut lines are now dry and I will start rolling. In the corner I won't be able to use the extension, that's why I'll just use the cage. First apply 
the paint in the middle of this section and then spread it out. And very light in the end. And we can proceed to the next section. Normally on a flat wall, you would go about one and a half lengths of the roller before you need to get more paint. And again, I'm going back a little bit to even out the lines. Now I'll get a little bit paint, not too much. since I want to get this section done. You do need to control the amount of pressure that you put on the roller when you work on different areas. And again, depending on how much paint you have in the roller at the moment so this would be a bit too thick that's why I'm going to even it out this way and again now we're doing a section that is obstructed by the doors so I will simply use the cage This one I can do right away, just apply a little bit more pressure on the roller and it will squeeze out the paint. And right now I'll do it very light. Normally when the wall, when walls don't have these rails, it's more straightforward. You simply go, uh, as I said, one and a half lengths of the roller each time. But in this case, we have some obstructions and uh, this is actually a good example to show you how to deal these uh, obstructions like this.
As for the bottom, again, you can even go like this if you want, but like here it's fine. Since we'll have to cut it again properly, two coats. Okay, now I'm at, at a straight section. I'll use uh, the extension and get a little bit more paint in the roller. You can extend it this way, it's even easier. And the uh, last one, here we won't be able to fit well, we kind of do, but it's going to be closed. That's why I will actually use the roller that's semi-dry to squeeze out the paint in this area. And I'll get a little bit more paint and finish off this part. Okay, this big wall is done and uh, since this one is already cut pretty much, we can do this one. The idea will be very similar, I'll just do this big portion first as you can see i'm going quite close to the electrical outlets and i should do it here as well get a little bit more maybe a little more and now getting close to the end of this wall oh hit the wire I will go over these sections that I have cut where I can reach it. See, this is not good. Okay. Seems I'm going quite fast in this area. I'm not really concerned about the paint drying, that's why I will just keep going. See, I'm starting to become reckless. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much how this one gets done. As for this narrow wall here, again, I will use uh, a different method. First, I will spread 
the paint in the middle like this and only then I will start to roll this way I'm making sure that there is not too much paint left in the roller and it won't squeeze out the paint uh, I said there is not too much paint on this edge here very mi minimal and you can also use a rag to wipe off excess if you have too much paint and um, that's it the first coat is officially finished let's see again how it looks this wall is pretty much dry now this the main one is drying this this is how the cut lines look like right now the next step will be to do the second coat there's no point showing you uh, how it's done the idea is exactly the same we'll basically repeat the whole process and uh, after that i'll show you how it looks and if it needs the third coat we'll do the third coat and um, in general you have to wait about two to four hours between uh, the coats so that the paint dries properly also, when you take a break, make sure to get some paint in the roller and uh, cover the tray with another one so that there is minimal gap here. Again, this way it won't dry. And another important step is to wash this brush. This is a very important step. I would suggest to wash the brush at least a couple of times during the day while you're painting. This way all this paint won't accumulate uh, in the corners on these edges and uh, your brush will last longer and uh, you will be able to cut straight lines. Make sure to get as much paint off near the edge here and from the sides of the brush. This is normally where a lot of paint accumulates dries out and stays there after you're done washing you can simply use this method to get the water out and uh, your brush is ready to go the second coat is fully dry now it looks much much better but unfortunately as i said uh, before looks like we'll have to do another one these uh, yellowish colors unfortunately don't always get covered into coats i'll show you what, what i mean as you can see the texture still shows through the second coat as well or through both coats as uh, gray uh, light spots and um, the cut lines are quite visible as well but overall it's almost there but I want to make it really good that's why right now I will do another coat the third coat and then I will show you the final result and this is now three coats of paint everything looks white I'll show you the cut lines and uh, the ceiling again no more gray spots and I'll show you guys the patches, the big patches that we had here. As you can see, they are almost invisible right now. There was one over here as well. And overall, I'm quite pleased with the results. Again, in this case, we had to apply three coats of paint. In uh, some other cases, normally it should be two. But since we have had this yellowish color as I said it required basically more paint 
That's it for our video today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this will be helpful. As I said before, we'll leave you the link for the patching video in the description as well. And um, we'll see you in the next video.